Uh, so now I'm going to jump into uh, a demo and just take you through what the product actually looks like. Here you'll see the, the screen where you're going to just get started creating a new search engine. Um, we have kind of two types of search engines that, that you are able to create. Um, you can use a developer API, which is more or less you know, abstraction on top of the APIs that you get from Elasticsearch. Uh, and then we also have the web crawler and, and the vast majority of our customers are going to use the web crawler again, because uh, as you'll see, it is, it is the easiest way to get started. And it really lets people kind of stick to the parts of their business they're most familiar with and let us handle the search aspects. So I'm going to start with the web crawler. I'm going to go here and I'm going to create a search engine for uh, the elastic website. And you'll see that really all this is, is just typing in your uh, URL. And this is going to uh, get you up and running pretty much immediately. So we do some tests on the website, just to make sure everything looks good. I'm gonna name the engine Elastic and create it. Uh, so tells us everything looks good. Uh, notes like what it has found so far about the website. So it's already consumed some of the sitemaps for you can see the different languages here. Uh, gonna complete the setup. And this is going to take me directly into the dashboard where you can see, you know, that this engine is available and it is being crawled right now by our web crawler. So this, uh, this is going to be a little bit bare right now, just because, uh, just because we haven't consumed any of the content you can see just created and has, has no documents so far. So I'm going to take you into a search engine that is already available. Uh, so we can look in a little bit more detail at, at what, what, this, uh, what this type of behavior is. Uh, so you can see that we already have content in the search engine. Uh, these are the pages we have crawled uh, for this engine. And you can look around in here. Uh, it has pretty much what you'd expect. This is essentially like a view into what we have um, at the lower levels in, inside of Elasticsearch. So if I look at one of these documents, you can see all the content that we've extracted on um, different fields. We've, ex we've pulled images out of the pages um, and we have some metadata like what are the types and even things like what is the popularity, um, how many pins or retweets does it have, things like that. Uh, and I'll take you through why this is important and what we let people do with this type of metadata uh, in just a moment here. We also have, uh, there's nothing for this particular document, but we also have analytics on a per document basis where we can say, you know, here are the most popular things leading to this document. Here's what it looks like in search results, um, things like that. So uh, we do a number of things, as Matt noted, to help people actually customize the look and feel and the installation of the, the search engine. And so this is what Matt mentioned earlier, that this is kind of like a Google Analytics style JavaScript include for your page. And the, the way this works under the hood for us is that this makes a request to our servers. Uh, there's a unique installation key here that identifies this engine and this configuration. Um, and our servers actually store all the configuration for you. Uh, and so you can update it live. So if you want to make some color changes or decide to show images or not show images, you can change that here in the dashboard. And as long as it's installed on your website, all of the changes are reflected immediately uh, without any need to, you know, do production deployments or, um, or again, involve engineering resources if that's not part of your process. So these are some of the things we allow you to change. Uh, pretty much everything you'd want to do in terms of look and feel. Uh, we let you customize both, you know, the full search results and the autocomplete results separately if you'd like to, uh, and really just tailor the entire experience to fit with what you expect on, on your website. Uh, beyond the results themselves, we also let you customize the interface. So you can see here that this is what your interface is going to look like. Uh, you can add all different types of uh, things like facets to it. Uh, and so you can say, like, I want to have a facet on type. And it creates the label. You can decide how you want it sorted. Um, and all this gets saved and reflected in real time. And all you have to do is just activate it, and it's there. Uh, so a lot of interface customization options. There's even more beyond this, but just to, to touch on what you get there. We also think it's really important, obviously, to let people explore you know, what this looks like in, in terms of the actual experience. So we have a search preview here in the dashboard where you can make these changes and then actually test them out uh, to get a feel for what it's going to be like when you put it into production. So we let you test all the changes before putting them live if that's what you'd like to do. 
uh, and you can also obviously test your relevance. A lot of what we invest in is letting people adjust their relevance and, and make changes to how their results actually appear on their websites. Uh, so I'm going to take, take you through that in just a moment. This is not what you're stuck with. This is just kind of the easiest out of the box version of you know, the, the look and feel for a Swift type search engine. But we also have a full set of developer tools and APIs that allow you to customize this entirely. So what I'm going to do is take you to this actual website uh, so you can see what the search experience looks like that we've built out custom for this search engine. Uh, so this is just a demo search engine, but you can see that this is uh, a fully custom experience and this is what it looks like on, on the actual website using our API and our developer tools. So we have a great fast autocomplete. It handles typos, so you can see I, I mistyped uh, watch there, um, but it handles everything properly. And again, this is just out of the box, like nobody had to configure anything for this. Um, what we've done is we've taken the best practices that we've learned and that Elastic has taught us over the years uh, for things like typo tolerance and, and fuzzy matching, and we have incorporated them out of the box for everyone who uses Swift type. So you have uh, great functionality there. Uh, and what happens is as people are typing in here and consuming this, we're also collecting analytics. Um, and that's one of the, I would say one of our customers' favorite features that all this stuff comes back as an event stream, all of it goes into Logstash um, and all of it gets consumed by, uh, the, by our application in the form of these different analytics. So we have some detail analytics here. Uh, where you can dig in and see actual trends of search queries and autocompletes over time. Uh, and you can also see some higher level metrics like, you know, what are your most popular queries? What are your most popular autocompletes? So you can even see this is what the user was typing. This is what we suggested to them uh, and, and it's what they ended up selecting. We also collect analytics based on the actual clicks for content. So as people are consuming the content, obviously the clicks are one of the most important, you know, engagement metrics for a search engine. And so the clicks are tracked as well per document and per query. And that lets us do some really interesting things as far as how do we do re-ranking over time based on clicks in the search engine? Um, how do we improve that based on that user feedback? Uh, we also have a, the notion of insights that is based on these analytics, uh, but takes it a step further to say, you know, you have some searches that return no results. Uh, here are some things you can do to actually improve those or searches that don't have clicks. Um, so we make a lot of recommendations as to how you can use the tool Swift Types offers um, to improve your search ranking over time. So I'll give you, uh, I'll give you a quick example of something like that. Um, maybe you come in here and you type Xfinity uh, and hit return and it says, hey, sorry, uh, we weren't able to find any results for Xfinity. And that's because there, there's no content that actually says Xfinity in the search engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the synonyms tab uh, and I'm just going to create a new synonym set on the fly. Um, so I'm going to say Comcast and Xfinity are the same things uh, since they released that brand. And I'll save that. Uh, and you know, this is one of the things that, uh, of course, is leveraging all the functionality that uh, that Elasticsearch puts out. And what we've done is really just try to simplify it for our customers. Um, this is probably the way they think about it. Um, and they just want to be able to come in here, enter that in, and we kind of handle all the heavy, heavy lifting under the hood to get that into Elasticsearch. So when I come back here uh, and I refresh, we should see some results, and we do. Um, so again, just kind of making this stuff as simple as possible for our customers, allowing someone who is non-technical within a business but cares about how results rank for Infinity, Xfinity to come in there and actually make that change. Uh, we have a lot of other control mechanisms for results. Uh, let's say we do a query for Facebook here. Uh, you see the results, you feel pretty good about them. But maybe you're thinking that, you know, actually we want this, re this result to rank higher, this uh, Facebook finds strengths as a family. Uh, we can come in here to the result rankings controls. And I'm gonna enter Facebook and we should see that same ordering of results. Uh, again, you can see the clicks that we have tracked over time um, in this result set. Oh, it's gonna should take a second to load there. Um, 
you can see these clicks that uh, that come in over time on the result set. Oh, the text is not showing up there. I'm not sure why that is, but um, let's say this is the third result. I'm going to move it to the first position. I come in here. It should be the same result. I'm going to take it, drag it up to the first position, and it actually pins it there. Uh, so if we come back over here, we'll actually see that change reflected in real time. Uh, so if I come back here, re-execute the search, uh, you see that that result has, in fact, been moved to the top. Um, and so this is like the type of really granular control that a lot of our customers are looking for and that we provide in kind of the most natural way, making the change visually in the dashboard. Another place uh, where obviously that cannot scale across all result sets. Um, so what we also try to do is let people do a search here uh, in what we call our weights feature. And, and what this is doing under the hood is that it's essentially using all the functionality of things like boosting. Uh, a lot of it's based on like script scores. So a lot of these things that you're doing here boil down to like painless scripts um, that, we, that we send in queries to Elasticsearch um, to do some of the more advanced functionality. So at the simplest level, um, you can do field-based boosting where you can say uh, boost any matches in the title field. Uh, and as you see, when you boost that, you actually see the results reorder in real time to show you how that's going to impact things in your search engine. Some of the more advanced functionality is to say, hey, we have a published at field and we want to boost things that are more recently published. Uh, and so you can add that in there, make that change. It'll boost more recent articles to the top. And if you save it, it's all reflected in real time. So you make that change, you come back over here uh, and search for Apple and all those changes are live on, on your website um, through the mechanisms that we outlined earlier, just that JavaScript copy and paste into your site. Uh, so that's a lot of the functionality we have. Uh, and you know, again, there's, there's more here, but we just wanted to touch on a lot of these different points and give you an idea of all the different ways that we're using the Elastic Stack internally to make this type of product possible for thousands of customers. Um, so thanks for your time and hopefully we can uh, answer some questions.